Apple A13 Bionic, according to some experts, is just a minor upgrade of the A12. Judge for yourself, the same 6 cores, 2 performance and 4 power saving in the CPU, the same 4 cores in-house design in the graphics and the same 8 in the neural processor, the same 7 nanometers process as before, only second generation, reminds me of Intel with its 14nm plus and 14nm plus plus processes, doesn't it? Nothing new at all. Kayan Drantz and Shrebalan Santhanam from Apple's microelectronics division didn't bother explaining the features of the Apple A13. The respected experts didn't believe them. They're right. If there was anything non-trivial about the A13, apparently they decided Apple would have remained proudly silent. Some saw in their talkativeness an ominous sign of impending disaster. The processor-themed interview Phil Schiller and Anand Shimpy gave Wired added fuel to the fire. As it turned out, the founder of the resource Anantec now works at Apple, in the very microelectronic division of the company about which, incidentally, almost nothing is known. However, the experts were not surprised by the rash act of one of the most authoritative columnists, but by the very fact of the interview. Ominous Omens What do you think of the Hell Dozen? The number 13. It's all prejudice and nonsense and all that, and yet many treat this number with irrational apprehension. Once, in 1996, I chose 13 and 666 as the keys to charge the security of an application. The program was for Max. It had real promise, but when I returned from vacation three weeks later, disaster had befallen Apple. Did I almost kill it? I don't know, but just in case, whenever possible, I avoid abusing that number. An A13 designated chip was imminent. But that's not the only damn dozen in 2019. iOS 13 and iPad OS 13, for example. But that's not all the iPhone 11 11 Pro slash 11 Pro Max is the 13th generation of the iPhone. The story of the new system on a chip is just beginning. What its fate will be no one knows yet. I wonder if the ominous number will play an ominous role. Or will it be like in 1977, the Apple I cost $666 after was not even a success, but a triumph. The same Apple A12 slash A12X Bionic process technology was the first commercially available chip made with 7 nanometers technology. By September 2019, 7 nanometer chips had lost their sensation status. They were no longer only produced by TSMC, it was time to take the next step. After announcing the start of alpha testing of the 5 nanometers process, TSMC announced extreme ultraviolet lithography, EUV, and an improved 7 nanometers N7 Plus process. The new process debuted in the Kirin 985 system on chip for devices with Android on board, but the Apple A12 slash A12X Bionic, no matter what, retained its leadership position. Advantages and disadvantages of the SoC are determined not only by the progressiveness of the technological process, but also by a mass of other factors. Vertical integration, practiced by Apple almost from the first days of its history has created another miracle. Oh, produced the Apple A13 Bionic uses an even more advanced process, the N7 Pro. According to TSMC, it is much better than the N7 Plus, and something completely different. What this translates into in reality is unknown. Apple knows about the N7 Pro and N7 Plus probably as well as TSMC, but there are no real ironclad facts about how they differ. Maybe it's just a new label on the same thing. Maybe the differences between them are so significant that TSMC didn't risk discouraging other buyers of its chips. TSMC's plan sounded like science fiction not long ago. The company planned to start mass production in 2020 with the 5 nanometers process. The necessary equipment was ready for testing. Test batches of 5 nanometers chips were already manufactured for alpha testing with partners, and the feedback was positive. But the most interesting thing, in 2022 TSMC was going to begin mass production of 3 nanometers chips, but testing is just testing to find problems and some of the problems can easily turn out to be hard nuts. Mankind has already gone too far without it. This is likely to be the case. Recently, TSMC announced an adjustment of plans. The N6 process, which was not in the previous versions of the plan, is now scheduled to be launched in 2020. The launch of N5 has been postponed to a later date. So far, judging by the information from TSMC, everything is good with N6, but until this process will not be used in any of the chips in 2020, nothing definite can be said. 
and all sorts of surprises are possible. As a nonsense, what if the first company to master the 6 nanometer process will be Intel? They have the strongest incentive of all, it is a matter of life and death. Imagine what and how it would change in this case. I've already mentioned the commonalities in the design of the A12 and A13. I won't repeat myself. Apple is never in the business of change for the sake of change. Hardly a vice. Before changing something, it is customary for the company to think thousands of times, to weigh new ideas repeatedly. And in the end, very often new ideas are sent to the archive, breaking with tradition leads, as it turned out through experiments with the keyboard and with the touch bar, not only to save time, but also to problems. The architecture in the A13 is conservative and time-tested. You can squeeze the necessary technical characteristics out of it with 100% confidence, and by focusing on other aspects, add a traditional twist to the SOC. The central processor consists of two power lightning cores, clocked at 2.65 GHz, and four power-saving thunder cores. Lightning stands for lightning, thunder for thunder. In addition, both code names evoke some associations, maybe only for me. Lightning is also one of the connectors used in mobile and in some other devices from Apple. Thunder brings to mind Thunderbolt. Those who claim no change in these cores compared to the cores in the A12 apparently have supernatural powers. See better than an electron microscope. Navigate billions of transistors. Feel their life pulse. The developers of the central processing unit's cores assure that the cores have been radically redesigned and improved. The CPU is 20 to 30% more productive and 30 to 40% more fuel efficient. It's more economical, in part, because of a new trick Apple has taught the SOC. Any SOC unit that is not in use can be de-energized and quickly, almost instantly, brought back to life as soon as it's needed. It is also more economical because while designing the processor, the most used applications in the App Store were studied. It turned out that the overwhelming majority of them, most of the time, don't need the power of power cores. In some magical way, vertical integration is magic. The processor calculates the optimal mode and turns it on. It sounds uncomfortable, but no problems seem to be detected because of this. The graphics processor is refined, improved. It is the most powerful GPU to work with Metal 2. The neural processor, which still has eight cores, is six times more productive, and machine learning is now handled by a special controller. Phil Schiller named one of the beneficiaries, those who benefit from the intellectual component of the new SOC, it is TTS, text-to-speech, turning texts into speech, reading them aloud, in case you're not aware. This technology was first shown on a mainstream computer by Apple during the demonstration of the first Mac, 35.5 years ago. In those days, it was imperfect to the extreme. TTS became more and more perfect as time went on, but it was elementary to distinguish artificial speech from real speech. Apple claims the A13 is the best machine learning platform of any smartphone, thanks to a number of improvements. Chief among them new dedicated gas pedals in the processor. They allow the phone to perform one of the most common machine learning tasks, matrix multiplication, six times faster. Overall, one processor has a throughput of one trillion operations per second. The processor comes with a machine learning controller. It allows scheduling ML models for CPU, GPU, and neural engine. This makes it a fully integrated platform that can balance efficiency and performance. It can be used for natural language processing on the device, image classification, in photos and videos, character animation, in AR applications, and much more. Apple has the unique advantage of what it calls owning the entire vertical stack. This means that the company creates its own software, system hardware, and designs its own processors. Therefore, it can optimize everything from the tiniest transistor to the smallest pieces of code itself. And this was the channel.